Hello, my name's Nigel Deakin and I work for Oracle. I'm here to tell you how you can create applications in Glassfish 3.1 which receive messages from, or send messages to, WebLogic JMS. We're going to do this using the generic JMSRA resource adapter. Now a resource adapter is a general component in an application server whose purpose is to allow applications to connect in a standard way with an external system such as a database or a JMS provider. Normally when using Glassfish you're connecting to Glassfish's own JMS provider, Message Queue, and in that case you're using a built-in resource adapter for that purpose. If you wish to connect to an external JMS provider, you have to use a different resource adapter. Now provided as part of Glassfish is a resource adapter called Generic JMSRA. The purpose of this resource adapter is to connect to foreign external JMS providers. And in Glassfish 3.1 we've added support for WebLogic JMS. At the moment there's a number of limitations in this in that there's no XA support and there's a limited MDB concurrency. So, uh, what I'm going to show you is an application, an MDB application, running in Glassfish. And what this is going to do is this is going to receive messages, like all MDBs, from a queue. But in this case, we're going to receive messages from a queue that's in WebLogic. And when the MDB receives the message, what is it going to do? It's going to send a message. And again, we're going to send a message to another queue, also in WebLogic. So, as you can see in the diagram, We've basically got an application which takes messages from one queue and sends it to another. Now, in order to demonstrate the application, we need to send some messages on the queue to start with, and I'm going to run that sender application. If we wanted to, we could have run a receiver application to consume messages from the outbound queue. But to keep this demonstration short, we're just simply going to use WebLogic Admin Console to monitor messages arriving on the outbound queue. Now let's start by looking at our WebLogic JMS installation. I've got the web browser here connected to the admin console and I'll just log in. Okay, so we're now logged in and I'll just navigate down under services, messaging, JMS modules, just to see the JMS resources that I've already configured. Click on the system module and you'll see I've configured two connection factories, an inbound connection factory and an outbound connection factory, and two queues, the inbound queue and the outbound queue. And these are absolutely standard default connection factories and queues. I'll just open a tab on the inbound queue and a tab on the outbound queue in the browser here. There's the inbound queue. Click on the monitoring tab, and I can use this tab in the browser to monitor the number of messages on the inbound queue. You can see there's zero. And now I'll just look on the monitoring tab for the uh, monitoring view for the outbound queue and again we'll see there's no messages. So here we are we've got JMS, WebLogic JMS with two queues currently empty. Now let's move on and look at the sender application which I'm going to run in NetBeans. Now this is a very simple let me just show you the sender very briefly. Okay so this is a this is not all of it this is not a uh, web this is not a Glassfish or WebLogic application, it's just a simple JMS application that connects to the inbound queue using the WebLogic JMS T3 Thin Client and sends a thousand messages to it. And that's all. So let's just run that now. WL Sender, right mouse, run. Just look at the log here. And it's now sending messages. Just compiling the code, and there we are. It sent 10,000 messages to the inbound queue. Okay, well now we've finished with the sender, but let's quickly look at the WebLogic admin console for the inbound queue. Click refresh, and you'll see this shows 1,000 messages. Okay, now let's deploy our MDB application to receive messages. Okay, back to NetBeans. Now let me just show you the MDB application I'm running. Perhaps the simplest thing for me to do is to I'll just open the MDB itself and you'll see again it's a very simple MDB. That's the entire MDB. The on message method receives the message obviously and when it's received it and extracted the payload what it does is it looks up the outbound connection, sends the text of the message to the outbound queue and then closes it. Now the important thing here is we're going to deploy this MDB not in WebLogic but in Glassfish. 
So let's go back to the Glassfish admin console and in fact let's go to the Glassfish admin console and just look at what we've got here. Now this is basically a completely empty installation of Glassfish 3.1 at the moment. Uh, so the first thing we have to do is we have to deploy the resource adapter. So in Glassfish 3.1 we deploy resource adapters just in, as if they were applications. So I'm clicking on the applications tab, click on deploy and now choose the, the file. Now this is the RAV file which I've downloaded from the generic JMSRA website earlier. This will also when be available through the Glassfish 3.1 update center when uh, Glassfish 3.1 is released. So the important thing here is to be using generic RA version 2.1. So let's just upload it and deploy it. And there we are, we've got generic source adapter now deployed in Glassfish. So let's go back to NetBeans and then deploy our application now. Now this is a NetBeans application, this will also create the necessary administered objects actually in Glassfish itself. So let's just click deploy. Now this uh, example will be available for download from the generic JMSRA website. So you can try it yourself. Okay, so now it's deployed. So let's have a look at the server output and we can see, yes, that we've got lots of messages successfully forwarded. So let's just have a look at the WebLogic admin console and just refresh it. And we can see the number of messages has fallen to zero. And if we go to the outbound queue and refresh it, we can see that the number of messages has risen to a thousand. So what we've got is a thousand messages sent to inbound queue and our MDB running in Glassfish has received them and sent them on or sent the text on to the outbound queue. And that's the end of the demonstration. Now finally let's review the configuration that we've had to set up or indeed that NetBeans has set up for us in this case in order to allow us to run this application. Let's look at the Glassfish admin console and first look at the resource adapter configuration. This is here and we can see these are the properties that the resource adapter, the generic RO resource adapter that we deployed earlier have to be configured. These are documented in the generic JMSRO website and in the Glassfish 3.1 documentation. But the important one here really is that we need to tell generic RA how to connect to the WebLogic JMS JNDI store because it needs to look up the administered objects from there. And that's with the JNDI properties property and you'll see this is a long string which defines for example the initial context factory in WebLogic and if I scroll along a bit further the URL of the uh, name provider of WebLogic JMS's JNDI store. Now let's have a look at the connect to connection pools. This is the these effectively are the connection factory used for the outbound connection. And first thing to point out is that it's configured to use generic ge generic RA rather than the default JMS RA, which is used to connect to message queue. And if you click on additional properties, we'll see that this is the connection factory. Remember that it's got a field, a property called connection factory JNDI name. Now this is used by the resource adapter to connect to the real connection factory, real as you might call it, in WebLogic JMS. So the thing to make clear here is really this connection factory in Glassfish is like a proxy for the real connection factory which is over in uh, WebLogic JMS. Same happens for the actual outbound queue as well. Again, we just click on this. So this is a queue definition in Glassfish's JNDI and we see it has it's configured to use generic RA and we see it's got a property called G destination JNDI name which is set to the JNDI name of the the real queue over in WebLogic JMS's JNDI store. So you'll notice that we've configured, we had to configure res Glassfish resources for the connection factory we looked at specifically and the outbound queue. We didn't have to do that for the connection factory and queue used by the MDB itself because those are explicitly defined in the deployment descriptor of the MDB. So let's just have a quick look at that before we finish. Um, so this is back to my NetBeans project and I'm just going to look at that's the uh, the sunny JB jar file of the MDB application and we'll see that 
this is configured to use generic RA and then we specify two activation config properties for the activation spec which are used by uh, generic JMS RA so it knows where to look up the where to obtain the connection factory and the um, destination and these are defined using the property connection factory JNDI name which is set to the real connection factory JNDI name over in WebLogic JMS and similarly for destination JNDI name this is defining the inbound queue in this case we, that's the real as it were inbound queue uh, over in WebLogic JMS so the point to note here is that we're configuring the activation spec to point directly to the sort of foreign JNDI provider. There's no need for a, a glassfish proxy objects in the case of these inbound resources. And finally, let's look at ejbjar.xml, the deployment descriptor, because this is quite important. Because you may remember I said earlier that if generic JMS RA is used to connect to WebLogic JMS, XA transactions are not supported. And that's why it's necessary when defining the MDB to specify the transaction attribute of the MDB to be not supported. That means no XA transaction is performed. So this will make sure that the MDB itself won't receive messages in a transaction. However, there's one final thing we need to make sure we've configured is that when we send the messages to the outbound queue, that that doesn't use a transaction either. And this is defined over in the, if we go back at the admin console and look at the outbound connection factory which we looked at briefly but if we just scroll down here we've noticed that we have to specify the level of transaction support to be local transaction because by default this will use an XA transaction. So there we have it. We've used Glassfish 3.1 in conjunction with the generic JMSRA resource adapter to receive messages from a WebLogic JMS queue and to send it, again using the same resource adapter, to a WebLogic JMS queue. There's more information about the generic resource adapter for JMS in the Glassfish 3.1 documentation and also on the generic JMSRA website. You can also find the source code and NetBeans project of this demonstration there as well. Thank you for listening.